So, so now we're looking at some examples of dog breeder websites that we found um, in looking around the web. I want to say up front, uh, it's quite possible one of you watching this video is going to see your website featured. And uh, let me be absolutely clear, I'm not doing this to embarrass anybody and I'm not doing this to insult anybody for sure. Um, all of you, uh, all of these websites may lead to breeders that are exceptional dog breeders. What I want to point out, in in fact, in maybe sort of a, 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 a very objective way, is what a prospect sees. What is the outside perception you're presenting to the world? Um, here is an example of uh, a breeder that has a website with uh, no pictures on the home page, uh, no real promises of of uh, of what they are, what they do, except for simply this is their headline: Labrador Retriever Puppies, and it's sort of like a menu. It's not necessarily making any kind of case for them as dog breeders. You see, they got a whole host of links here, and uh, this is fairly basic. There's nothing wrong with that per se, except remember that the point is, as a prospect, I'm looking at this, and I need to be convinced that you are one of the top breeders or at least going to be one of the high quality breeders that uh, that I'm looking for. Um, the content here is actually quite good. This this uh, this breeder does appear to have um, you know some elements of a very good inside reality. So there are things like uh, you know the performance of their dogs, um, some very uh, specific details that are going to be relevant to people looking for game dogs. Um, on the other hand, though, it could not be uh, said that this is a particularly lovely looking design. Um, although black font on a white background is, in fact, easier to read, so I'll, I'll give them that much. Um, if we go over to puppies, um, we don't have any pictures of the puppies. We have no uh, lineage, and again, to be fair, they're claiming that this is under construction. That's no small um, point to bring up because uh, what it implies is that the actual task, the technical task of assembling this website has proved so onerous to this breeder that they haven't finished it. They're busy being dog breeders and uh, running their business and the, the, uh, they're stuck on the logistics of actually assembling the website, which means that they're not going to be selling any Labrador puppies based on this page. Let's go to another example. Here is a, a great favorite of dog breeders. I'm not quite sure why this is the black background. Also, uh, it seems that many dog breeders are thoroughly enamored with the use of color. Um, it's been proven through extensive research, it's particularly over the last 50 years, that black fonts on top of white backgrounds are the easiest for human beings to read. In fact, the hardest for human beings to read is exactly this, what's called reverse fonts. Uh, white f letters on a black background. Very difficult for people to read. Even more difficult if you make it in italics like that. Uh, but probably the most challenging to make your prospect sort through is colored fonts on a black background. This is just very simply put, very, very difficult to read. The information here might be pertinent for a prospect looking for puppies, but you're really asking a prospect to do a lot to have to sift through this kind of um, design to get to it. Um, and again, I don't know much about how difficult it would be to maintain this website. It's hard to know whether these were built by the uh, breeders or built by, again, you know, Cousin Larry down the street who uh, built it and then went backpacking in Europe and can't be found anymore. Let's look at a couple other examples. Here again, you got the black background with the additional star pattern. I like that. Um, again, very difficult to read. I think the content here is actually quite good. This may, in fact, be one of the uh, one of the exceptional dog breeders. They seem to have um, a good sense of the uh, genealogy of their dogs. They have a lot of great content here. There are association um, affiliations here. Um, nonetheless, uh, it is difficult, and they are making their prospects do a lot of work to get to the content. And uh, it's, it's a lot to ask your, your prospect to do. We need to make it easy on the prospect to learn how good you are rather than difficult. Um, but they do a couple things right. They've got their number right up there on top. So um, if a prospect looked at this and said, oh, enough, I can't read it, they could just go ahead and call the number. And ultimately, that's really what you want a prospect doing. Here's another one we found. This one, um, actually, the design is kind of quite pleasant. Um, it looks like it was uh, 
uh, they took some time with it. In fact, we dug around a little bit, and the breeder is also the web designer here. Um, so uh, my hat's off to uh, to Linda for doing this. Um, but there are a couple points to bring out. This does not um, have any information about sort of the more detailed things that uh, excellent dog breeders are doing, the genealogy, the shows, the um, the history of the dogs, um, careful uh, um, history of the breeding pairs, um, the photographs. Again, I don't know if this is the case or not, but the photographs sort of look like uh, somebody's living room, um, which maybe doesn't uh, is not the perception that you want your prospects to have. Um, in fact, actually, if we go over here, uh, there is this dog, what we can assume is the dog breeder in front of what looks like an apartment building and probably not the perception you want to be giving to uh, folks looking for puppies. Again, I don't know if that's the case, but we can only go on what we see um, based on the outside perception. And that's why it's so important to match up the inside reality with the outside perception. Let's go to another one. This this took the cake for us. Uh, I, I don't even know where to begin on this one. Um, it's uh, again this might be an example of a very very good dog breeder however holy cow uh, who can read this um, this really looks uh, I mean it's 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 uh, it's sort of fun and I think everybody thought this was a really good idea but uh, again in terms of making a prospect read italicized reversed fonts on a black background uh, that is an awful lot of work it's just too difficult to read that or, uh, in fact, even just by my selecting it and turning it white, it already gets to be instantly easier to read. I would get rid of the italics. Certainly, it's very difficult. Although this, by the way, is a very clever bit of programming. They've got these little buttons that jump to one graphic to another when I scroll over them. That's that's sort of clever. I can tell you, it probably was not easy to do. And if they paid somebody to do it, it was uh, not inexpensive. And the point is, does it help your prospect learn if this is a good dog breeder? or not, if this is where they want to go for their puppies. Finally, let's look at an example of what we thought was a very clean design, and I'll tell you exactly why we thought this. Um, here is a breeder that has a, a easily readable format. They've got their, um, uh, you know, a short about them page. The graphics look professional. It's organized well. It looks professional. We can see everything we need to do in terms of seeing uh, males and females, youth, breedings, litters and puppies for sale. Um, this is one that we want to get into detail about, but this gives you an idea that uh, um, of what a clean design uh, does for your prospects. In video number three, we're going to talk more about this website in particular and how you could have a website just like this.